record this. As you know already, uh, I have a Google channel uh, on YouTube. I will put it. On, I will insert it into acs.asa.ro/java as well. So uh, please share your screen. Let's get started with the uh, multi-threading for parallel computing. Thank you, Razvan. So uh, let's go together into the following approach. Yes, file new, thank you, Java project. And here, yeah, you can leave Java 11, well, at least Java 8 I need because maybe I'm transforming something in Lambda, maybe not, doesn't matter. You got it, I hope everybody, that you can use Lambda with both callable and runnable interface. Both of them are functional interfaces. And you got it regarding the limitations. Uh, I mean, you do not have a full-blown class which implements that interface. You have a full-blown Lambda functionality which is overriding public void run and respectively public T whatever T call. Good. This being said, let's call this program because this is uh, seminar laboratory number nine, S09 underscore. Meanwhile, I'm going to kindly request remote control, please approve. Underscore GAPP. Very good. Thank you very much. And then underscore here, HPS, uh, HPC, sorry, high performance computing. Next. And as you remember, your last assignment, assignment number seven, was uh, regarding uh, to the addition of two input vectors and as a result to have it in the third one and to operate over the chunks inside those vectors uh, to obtain uh, intermediary sums of the elements and then to, con to add all these intermediary sums and in the end of the day to obtain the third vector, which is the result, is the array result of the addition of two. Uh, vectors. Right now, we are doing an implementation similar but on a different operation, addition of the items of the elements inside of one single array, exactly what we have discussed in the lecture. Right now, we are putting directly into practice and therefore we are not going to spend time with too much explanation. How many of you did not attend the lecture in Romanian language or English language regarding parallelism? Please write it down in chat or tell me because I want to know how, do, how I can adapt to, to this challenge. Okay, so next, okay, next, uh, okay, do not generate, don't create, so only two persons, that's it, three persons, okay, okay, uh, I strongly recommend to all of you to follow and to persuade and to learn, including via presence in the lecture, so it's going to boost your productivity and it's going to boost your understanding if you are attending the lectures. It's, simple, it's just like that. It's just like that the same. Okay, now let's move forward. So since we have only two persons, no worries. I'm doing my best to uh, recover somehow explanations from the lecture as well, but I'm not promising anything. So right now, you see, I have, I can close uh, this matrix or not, I, I don't care. We are with an empty project in S09. And here in S09, in the source, in the source, I want to create, so select source, select uh, SRC, right click and then new. And with this class wizard, we are going to do to achieve two things. First of all, the package. The package I want to be called eu.asa.hpc, high performance computing. The name of the class, actually I don't care uh, for the moment, but I'm going to put in here frog main, main program, hpc, multi-threading, whatever. So frog main, high performance computing with multi-threading. And I'm going to check public static void method and I'm going to finish this. Okay, control plus in order to increase the font is large enough for you. Is anybody who wants a larger side, uh, font size, sorry. If not, let's get started. And right now, as you know very well, I'm targeting to do what? To use an array of 40 million elements, million elements. So I would say here int dimension, of the vector is going to be 40 underscore 00 underscore 00. 
million. This is available starting with Java 8 in order to see, to have a better view regarding the units and the thousands and so on. Here, I need a private at this level of the class field, static one, where I can tweak the number of the threads in n threads equals four. Most likely your colleague is having four CPU cores, at least two physical and four virtual in hyper-threading mode. Correct me if I'm wrong, Razwan, but I will see immediately in the taskbar, in the task manager. And right now, finally, I would insert the int array V from vector, which is uh, allocating to from this four bytes reference pointer, or maybe eight bytes, but normally is four bytes, conceptual address, allocating new an array of 40 million elements. Beam. Therefore, my array is going to have in the heap allocated somewhere of 300 plus something megabytes. Why? It's simple. It's 40 million multiply with four is 160 million. Oh, no, 150 megabytes plus. Why? Because 160 million bytes, I'm dividing by 1000, I'm obtaining kilo and I'm dividing by 1000 and I'm obtaining megabytes. So 150 plus megabytes. Good. This being said, let's instantiate this array. So I'm going to simply say for int i equals zero, i is less than dim dimension, i plus plus, and uh, here, of course, I'm going to say v indexed by i equals y, one plus i. Okay. This being said, let's establish what is for me int start index, let's say equal zero, stop index equal zero. And these are int. I need the long start time and stop time. I will put this zero as well in order to measure the milliseconds used or system ticks used in order to obtain the sum of the elements of the items from my array. And finally, I would need, as you know, uh, partial uh, sums, which I'm going to store them into an array of long, long object with capital L, and I would call this V vector of sum, V sum, equals new long, and as long as it's an array, and I'm targeting to have partial sums for a sum for each thread, therefore the number of threads are di dictating me how many elements I have into these threads, into this array. Okay, this being said, let's do it very fast. The addition, sequential addition of the uh, elements from my array. So simply put it, I'm going to say something like this. So I need long, I'll put it as well, final sum in here. Long sum equals null. Okay. And here, when I'm starting sequential, I would say sum equals new long constructor receiving para real parameter zero. And then I have start time equals from system class, I'm going to call static method current time milliseconds. Similarly for the stop time. So copy paste here, I have stop time. Let me do it like this, meanwhile. And of course, I need to find out how many milliseconds I spend, me as a Java virtual machine, uh, and then as an operating system to do the addition of the elements, which of course I did not yet implement it. 
print line. And then I would say, yes, I need, sorry, on this, sequence uh, time equals, then concatenated for real with the stop time minus start time. This is for sure. Then concatenated with, I want to see actually the sum if it is okay, right? So if the sum that I have calculated is correct, then I'm concatenating with sum because I want to find out if using multi-threading, I'm going to obtain the same sum, of course. Now, this being said, I kindly request you to, uh, Razvan, do you know how to implement in two lines the addition of the elements from the array? Please go ahead. And each one of you, you have one minute. Perfect, thank you. Perfect, thank you very much. So in here, of course, if I want to uh, have a better, faster uh, implementation solution, then I would say something like long s equals zero. Then here I have s plus equal. And then finally, after this four, thank you very much as one, I would have s equals new allocating memory right now of, for instance, long. And in here, I'm going to put s. That's it. Okay. Let's get started for running this. And I'm left clicking here, right click, and then I have run as Java application. And as you can see, of course, I have obtained the sum zero, which is not correct, and the sequence time 33. Let's see where we uh, got an error, where we got problem. All right, so I have my array, I have the sum long s, is less than dim, okay. Dimension to me is 40 million, which is fine. And I'm going through this array, and then, yes, here is my mistake. I would have sum equals new long of s, which makes sense right now, right? This I want to run one more time. So right now, once I have created with run the configuration of running, I have it in here, you know. And as you can see, in the right panel, I have here the sequence time 38 milliseconds, right? And I have 80 blah, blah, blah million. Please pay attention. If, if, if my sum, you, you see right now, right? I have 38 milliseconds, right? And right now, if I'm going to comment this and to say, okay, my sum, how was in, in, in uh, how to say? how was in the beginning, right, with sum, which is an object, which is in long, calling plus equal, which is an overloading, special overloading inside Java, exactly like in string class, overloading that I cannot apply in Java, like in C++ or even C sharp. It's going to appear in the next Java, most likely in Java 15, but right now I cannot apply to it. So yes, let me rerun again. And let's pay attention. So 38 milliseconds versus 455. So I hope it's clear for everybody why I have this, right? So I have 38 milliseconds in the beginning versus 473. So let's compare apples with F, apples and oranges with oranges. I hope it's clear for everybody. So I'm going to keep in here S plus equal then sum, and I'm sticking around 40 milliseconds, more or less. I'm going to put comment in here, 40 milliseconds. Which in multi-threading depends. I can obtain something like 27, we will see, or something like, I don't know, 20, but no more, okay? So let's continue one more time, this, and then I'm moving to multi-threading. So I have 33 milliseconds with this amount of value, eight, we can calculate what value is in here. You know, we have uh, thousands and then uh, millions, and then so we have 20 millions, and then we have billions, so we have 
800,000 billions, 20 million is the sum of the element, which is good enough, is 80 dot 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 something in 33 milliseconds. Let's move forward and let's do right now the multi-threading actually. So I'm going to copy this and let's move with the multi-threading, control C. Okay, and this is the subtopic number two. Now I'm not using sequence anymore, I'm using standard multi-threading. I'm saying standard because I'm not planning to use in this second uh, multi-threading with executor service. It's going to appear immediately. So standard multi-threading. And let's see how many milliseconds I'm going to obtain. Again, sum equals zero. Again, I need a start time, as you can see. Again, I need a stop time. And, sorry. And again, I have system out print line, but this time, instead of seeing, okay, subtopic one, sequence time, I wanted to see. This is subtopic two, and I want to see standard multi-thread time, all right? And of course, I have the sum. So this from here remains. What is different right now is different this, right? So for this, this is the uh, second subtopic, as I have told you, I want to work directly with what? I want to work directly with threads and I want to split my array as I, we have discussed in the lecture. I want to split my array in chunks of n threads and to process these chunks accordingly. So let's get started. And we are going to have something like this. So first of all, I'm going to have a four, sorry, four, int iterator it equals zero, it this time is less than n threads. it plus plus, okay. This being said, now is the time to play around. Let me have this sum. And of course, I would have also the, uh, actually the final, uh, how to say sum is going to be a sum of each partial sum of number of n threads. So I'm leaving here some new long, but I'm also leaving here, as you can see, long s equals zero are used in counter peers, like in here. So I simply say, okay, when this is s zero, I want to be sure each time, okay. Right, each time I'm planning to reinstantiate to zero the sum. Okay, and let's calculate in here. So I have four threads, let's stick to this use case directly, four threads, but I have n threads I can modify anytime to 32 threads, to 128 threads, whatever number of threads I want. So let's stick to this one. And in here I need to calculate the chunks. So therefore I need the start index to calculate and Yes, I need to calculate the stop index. Let's stick and let's focus about start index. It's going to be the my iterator multiply with dimension of the vector divided by number of threads. And I think that's it for the moment here. Okay. And then finally for the stop index, I would have what? IT plus one multiply with the same thing in here, the same mathematical expression, minus one, All right? Let's calculate. So if I have four threads, my array is going to be split and allow me please to annotate this very fast. So annotation. So I have an array look at line number 10 with these values. I hope everybody agrees. One, two. We cannot see the annotation. You cannot? Really? Let me try again. Very strange. Let me try again. If not, it's not an issue. I'm going to, when I'm typing right now, one with blue, did you see it? Nope. 
well nice anyway so i'm going to because i have explained this into the lecture i'm going to skip this i don't know why uh, and i'm going to explain in here let's assume i have my array and everybody agrees with these values let me put as a comment comment because we, we did this already in the lecture one two three dot 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 this you can see right up to because i have 40 millions 39 millions yes 999,999, and then finally 40 million elements okay so this is my array what i'm planning to do i'm planning to split this in the number of threads i have in this moment four threads so i would have a chunk of 10 millions in the first part then immediately after the second part is laying down uh, immediately after the first part till the middle of my array another 10 million elements then i have another 10 million elements is the third quarter and finally the last quarter is going to be another 10 million elements and i want to process them in parallel hopefully why because i expect for instance if i have four cpu cores with let's assume they are physical with four rix register four rdbx register rcx and so on and so forth registers i hope that the jvm is able to split my threads over the cpu cores not mandatory because the mapping is many to many of the threads from the java virtual machine to the cpu cores real physical cpu cores. but i would expect in best case scenario to have each one of these uh, four threads running in a separate CPU core in parallel, which means running and processing each one of the thread parts, uh, different parts from my array. And as you pay attention in here, I have IT equals zero less than four, which means I have four iterations with IT equals zero, one, two, and three. And I hope everybody agrees that the first iteration start index is zero because zero multiply with anything is zero. And then stop index is zero plus one, one. Multiply with dimension 40 million divided by four is 10 million minus one is 9,999,999,999,999 in the beginning. Okay, so almost 10 million minus one, which means it's okay. It's the first chunk of 10 millions from my array. Then when I'm moving to iteration number two, which actually IT equals one, then I have start index what? One multiply with 40 divided by four is 10. So from 10 million till the half of my array, which means IT one plus one, two multiplying with 10, 20 million minus one is 20 million minus one element. So is the second quarter of the chunk, right? Of 10 million elements items. And therefore my start index and stop index is very nicely calculated in here. Right now, what I'm planning to do, I'm planning to do the following. Uh, I have start counting the time, as you can see in here with start time. All I want to do is to use a thread array of four elements, actually an n threads element, which I'm going to call it VTH, vector thread, right? Equals new thread of, uh, as I have told you, n threads. Okay, and moving forward, I need my class which is going to be something like uh, my uh, multi array processing class my multi array right which this time is a v r small v capital r from vector or array of runnable objects and therefore for this i would have something like new again my multi array which means i have the constructor without parameters and with parameters or eventually only one let's see and then i have here again n threads why i have created two arrays because this one is going to be a wrapper over this one and why i need wrapper because i'm planning to have this class implemented right now together with you by a, a, a simple class which implements one able so let me uh, click over the class actually mouse over the class name 
and here I have create class. Yes, I want to create this. And as long as I'm in, in this wizard with browse at the super class, actually, I don't want super class, I leave it Java lang object. But as interface, I'm adding run able from Java lang, as you can see. So I'm ad adding this. Okay. And when I'm finishing, the wizard is creating for me what the skeleton of my class, which is public and is overriding the run method. What I need is discussed in the lecture. I need in this class for each one uh, of out of four objects of n threads object, I will need a private int. Actually, the reference is a pointer. I'm not copying 10 million elements in each object. I'm just pointing to them how I have vector of input in here. I need to have a private int start index or start, simply say start. Private int, let's say stop. And finally, I have a private long, actually like this, <clears throat> sum, right? So I would have something like this. And of course the constructor public is the constructor is a method with the name of the class is returning nothing, even void. And in here I'm targeting to have access to the input vector. So is an array. I would say input array, something like this. Then I would need the start index and stop index. And I would say this V input equals input array. I kindly ask you as one to control space, yeah? So it means that my V and P is pointing in the same area of memory where it's pointing this does not, does not mean that I have copied element by element from one area of random access memory from heap into another area in, in heap in random access memory. Not at all, I'm just pointing to that. I'm not allocating with new, I'm not the, therefore uh, then copying with four and so on. And then I would have what? This dot start copy by value, a tra parameter transmitted by value in start index formal parameter and stop index, the next formal parameter is going into stop. Good. Now this being said, let's move forward. And let's move forward meaning what? Meaning that I need in here in order to uh, be somehow to compare oranges with oranges, I need the local variable s. I need then in the end my sum, this dot sum equals only one time, new long of s. Do you know, I'm coming back with a question. Hold on a little bit. Do you know in here is a question. Why for instance, when I used instead of s, which is a fundamental type long, as you can see in declaration in here in 916, I have used sum which is having the type of capital L ong. So is a class. Why do I had a very, uh, why did I have a very, very difference, big difference in time of running? Yeah, of course, that's it, yeah. Long is a primitive type and is working much faster. And here being an object, please think about it. In the object, when I did sum plus equal, which means actually what? Reallocation of memory in behind with new and completion and filling out that reallocated memory with a new value and so on and so forth. So always means reallocation. 40 million times of reallocations impacts the running time instead of having 37 milliseconds into 400 something milliseconds, right? I hope everybody agrees, right? Okay, this being said, let's move forward and coming back into our class. And into our class, that's why I want to compare apples with apples, oranges with oranges. So I'm keeping this long s equals zero, zero. I'm keeping this statement in here only in the end, right? 
I'm going to allocate only once. And then I have my for, and I will say, okay, for int i, if you want, I can keep it i, but, but it's the same, my equals zero. i less than, and let's think about it. If I want to be faster, I need the dimension to have it somehow directly extracted in here. So I would say int my dimension equals only one time with this v input length because otherwise I should get the length anytime with a lot of optimization of JVM. I should get the length, thank God is not a, a method because I should call a method, but here is a field. But it's much better to have it only once, dime, I plus plus. And here, actually I did a stupid thing. I don't need the dimension and the length because I'm not, uh, I'm planning to do it in parallel. So actually that's why I'm getting the start and the stop. I'm going from whatever start I'm receiving in the constructors, in the constructor as you have seen, to whatever stop. This is my design. So I'm going from start to less than equal stop. Okay. And in this for I'm doing only one statement. I would not need these uh, brackets, but I put it. So what is the statement that I'm using? S plus equals, so S equals with itself S long plus, and right now I'm going to put this dot V input indexed by I. And that's it. I did my class, which I would expect to have four objects in my case, four objects from this class. Each object is pointing, each object is pointing into same area of memory with V input, vector input, but I have different start stops as I have told you in the debug uh, and I have shown you in the debug session in the lecture, but I'm going to show you exactly in, in here. And of course, I'm going to have this sum differently for each one of out of four objects from this class. Why? Because I have different intermediary sums for different chunks of memory, as you may know in here and as you may have noticed already. So I have one chunk, of course, is one sum. I have another this different chunk, which is another sum and so on and so forth. I have four chunks, four quarters. Therefore, I did the split inside each iteration of this four, for start index and stop index. The only thing I have to do left is to have this intermediary sum assigned with zero. So I would say here, V sum indexed by IT actually is new uh, long, not long, <laughs> long of zero. And finally, allow me please. And finally, I would say what? My runnable threads, which is VR, the class that just I have finished of IT equals for each iteration, I'm going to do new call this multi array, multi, my multi array class, which is implementing runnable. I'm going to call the constructor. And if you remember right now, Razvan, this is related to your question, right? So I have to pass the same area of memory and then I have to be careful how I split that area of memory in processing, right? So I'm passing V sum and then finally start index for each iteration and stop index for each iteration, right? So I'm doing this. Let me see what is happening in here. Why is saying constructor? Ah, is not, I do not have a constructor like this. So V sum is not V sum in here, sorry. Is of course my uh, simply V, right? The array. V sum, ignore it for the moment. I can even take out from here. I put it in here because I wanted to have it zero and I wanted to have it zero because I wanted to use it. If you want, I can uh, keep it for later on. So just for the moment, look, I don't want to interfere in here. Let's have it like this, control X and going outside with it. And of course I have a, um, an error because it's saying who is IT as long as 
the uh, visibility domain of IT is ending with this bracket, which is normal. Okay, leave it for a while like this. And then I'm going and I'm focusing to this vector thread and this vector thread VTH, of course, indexed by IT. I have four elements in this array as well, is new thread. And right now I'm encapsulating, I'm wrapping inside this constructor VR of IT, index by IT. Good. This being said, now I have prepared four objects from my thread class, right? And I'm ready to do what? I'm ready to do the next statement. For, I'm going to copy this IT from here, control C. And let's do together. And in here, I would say simply my array of threads indexed by IT dot start. Okay, and of course, I'm going to have four threads. I have to wait for them. I have to join in the main thread in here, all of them, because after that, I want to have a complete sum calculation for each intermediary chunk out of my array, initial array. So therefore, I'm going to copy this and simply say, okay, this is the join. And a Okay, along with this join, what I want to do, I want besides this uh, join, of course, this join is going to yell at me in here. So I'm commenting uh, this line to, co to keep focus. And I have this light bulb in Eclipse ID. I'm just simply click on it and it's saying, surround with try catch. Yes, I want to surround with try catch. And therefore, right now is fine. So. Why? Because I may have an interrupted exception. So I have launched four execution thread. I wait for all of them, all four of them. And as long as I'm waiting for them, then I will have the full, yes, the full partially sum calculated. Therefore, the last thing I have to do is yet another four statement where in the number of threads actually are four, zero, one, two, three, right? I have to do what? to get the intermediary sum. So I would say V, as you can see, this one from here, let me show you. So this V sum from line number 15, I'm going to take it and say, okay, for each intermediary sum, V sum of IT, of index IT equals long of zero. So at each iteration out of four, I would have intermediary sum zero. I'm getting from the my uh, multi-threading, from my thread array, I'm getting the sum and how I'm planning to get. You see, this was a workaround, a trick. As long as void, as long as run is not able to return a value because of this void in here, I'm keeping inside of this private field I'm keeping the intermediary sum for each object out of four, uh, respectively uh, targeted by the thread that I have launched with start. And the only thing I have to do is public and to return the long get sum to return this field, simply saying return this punct dot sum and that's it. Okay. Now, coming back into our main program, this class is ready, it's not almost ready, it's full-blown ready. So let's move forward and coming back in here, yes, all I want to do is to say, okay, vsum indexed by IT is not equals with new zero anymore, it is actually my vector thread indexed by IT get sum. Uh, I think I I must get some here, sorry, is VR. VR. So again, please, please let me finalize this and I'm going to uh, reconvene immediately. And then finally, I would have what? I would have my sum, right? Plus equal, right now I'm losing some time in here because I'm allocating four times in a row. I'm allocating for what? V sum 
of id therefore in order to not lose any time i hope you agree this is redundant as long as i'm i don't need i mean ju just get the sum so this i can comment it out right i'm getting the sum and then my sum final sum i have it in here equals with zero right so have no issue this is one thing the second thing i'm going to pinpoint again so i'm operating with two arrays as you can see in here i'm operating with thread array let me show you so come on i'm operating with vth three letters and i'm operating with vr two letters this is an array of four objects in my case as long as n threads is four but as long as is eight is going to be eight threads and eight objects but right now let's stick to this sample this instance of four so as you can see in here vr is having four objects out of this class i mean from this class okay then what i'm doing with each one of these objects i'm wrapping in each one of vth object indexed by it another four object array four objects array which is encapsulating is wrapping right each element from vr it and i can show you immediately in the debug mode how is the reference into that then i'm starting four threads besides the main thread in total five threads inside my jvm and then i'm waiting all of them for in this main thread and finally after this i'm getting intermediary sums for each ch process chunk and then i'm adding to my sum and again this is wrong in here because i have plus equal if i want to be consistent i can use this s from here and therefore as long as i'm using that this s from here i can say in order to compare apples with apples, oranges with oranges again. I would have S plus equal V sum of IT, indexed by IT, and only one time allocation of the memory of the loan. Right now, if everybody working the same time with me, I'm going to go to each one of your PC to see that you have no errors. And therefore, when I'm running this, let's see the time. First of all, let's see the sum is the same, right? The sum is the same, but the time, is 30 right is 30 because we will see how how good we split our computing so let me show you but we will see other machines as well right so let me see in here and instead of n threads of four i would say okay i need two threads for instance if i need two threads let me run this right and i have what i have 29 as you can see in here versus 19 so which is normal you may say why is not half of it is not half of it because is directly dependent of the number of the processors and cpu cores i assume your colleague is having only two cpu cores why because i use two threads and i have a better time Sometimes I can have the same time if I've not captured uh, two different CPU cores. My two threads from the JVM, uh, they were not, be uh, were not be processed by the different CPU core, right? I would get the same time. Yes, could be because, uh, Andre, if the number of the threads, right, if the number of the threads is greater than the number of the CPU cores, or even equals, sometimes you can get this issue. So let me show you how many cores is having our colleague in here. So I kindly ask Razvan to show the task manager, right click on the status bar. I'm going to uh, watch your uh, screen uh, again, uh, Andre Marius, immediately. So Razvan, would you be so kind to share your task manager? Right click in the status bar task manager and move it in here. I did it, but uh, I only shared the window with uh, Eclipse. So that's, why, that, that's, why, that, that's why the annotation was not working for you. Anyway, so let me stop share screening. And it is working, nevertheless. And let me show you um, how to say. Let, let's go uh, screen by screen in order to find out eventually issues. And let's see. So first... Uh, Matej Kurezvan I has working with. 
Let me rename my... It says name. here that I have six cores. Six cores. Then it's good enough. On the six, you have six cores in the hyper-threading mode, but real number yeah, of maybe. cores... Then I would be two or four. Okay. Nevertheless, I'm going to uh, each one of you, and then I want to see different times. Okay. So I move forward first. Payu Alex, could you would you be so kind to share your screen, please? Meanwhile, I'm going to stop the recording.